year was a crazy year for swarming. In our breeding yard alone, we caught six swarms without even trying. And we go into this hive and found out that there was a swarm in this hive. Our breeding yard or Bee Yard 51 is where we refine all of our genetics and build up five frames to then plug into all of our main production hives. I haven't seen a brood pattern like that before since you, VIP. Before you think it's a one-off, these ones are hashing currently, or emerging currently. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. I like that a lot. So over the rest of the year, we're going to take a peek at four of our nucleus colonies. We still don't have an official name for them, so that's where I need your help. Do you think we're going to be able to get these built up in time for winter? I just got up, I put my hand down, I felt a bee underneath it. I freaking squished the queen. Oh my goodness. I mean, I know this is a part of the trade and it happens. Just not many people show it when it happens. Oh my gosh, now I feel so terrible. She got squished when I put the frame down. Oh my gosh. Well, I guess this hive is now about to be queenless. I am heartbroken. <laughs> so now they have to make their own queen. I mean, there's enough eggs in there for them to do it, but well, hopefully this makes you guys feel better when uh, stuff like this happens to you guys, because it even happens to the best of us. Like I said, it's a part of the job. Oh my gosh. Well, that's all right. Another way of helping with European foul brood is the requeen. So, hey, I guess now they get to requeen. Lovely. Um, hopefully not all of it was infected. I'm going to put her in a little cage and keep her. I don't like losing queens. Oh my gosh. This makes me so sad. It is what it is. <sighs> okay, well, let's move on to the next hive and I'm gonna be a lot more careful when I take the frame out. I don't know how I missed her. But, okay, so the next hive we're gonna look at is this one. So, okay, we're gonna go according to, so you guys can suggest what we should name each hive. Now you guys get to watch this hive requeen itself, so that'll be cool. This will be hive number one. Let me know what you guys think I should name it. This will be hive number two. What should we name this one? So this hive is one of the extra nukes that we made up. So some of our nukes that we made up this year were so ridiculously strong that we were able to put a second story on top of our five frames and let them just start building up bees into that. So when we pulled out the nukes for you guys, we were able to put in queen cells so that they could just requeen themselves and get going. So this is one of those hives that we were able to do that with. Um, and they are jam-packed last time I checked. So let's see how they're doing now. Oh, wrong hive. Pretty sure it's actually this one. <laughs> Casey told me it was that one, but nope. I bet you it's this one. Yeah, I think it is. Yep. Okay, so this is the one. All right, so let's see how she's doing, and we're going to be careful with the queen this time. <laughs> Gosh, I cannot freaking believe that that happened, though. That's never happened to me before. Ah, that's so frustrating. It's fine. Ugh. Okay, so we have a frame right here that they're working on drawing out at the moment. And I know these frames look a little beat up, but these were frames that already had comb on them. And then we ended up trading um, some queens and queen equipment and stuff so that we could get like a thousand of these or maybe it was like 500 of these frames. But we got quite a few of these from a commercial beekeeper and then we just re-waxed all of these with beeswax which that is the secret to drawing comb i have a video coming out about that very soon but so they've been really taken to those pretty quickly we'll probably move that one in just so that they are able to uh, work it more and draw it out more okay so 
We have some calved brood. And it looks like she's back laying into some of this on both sides as they emerge. So we're gonna move that one to the outside. And then we have another frame of capped brood or partially capped brood. They look to be looking pretty good. And another frame of capped brood with some of it emerging. Oh boy, they are about to explode. They are definitely ready for a 10 frame. Like see all that? When you see this much capped brood, this hive is about to triple in size. So honestly, I could probably, if I have some extra frames, put a second box on top of this for them to start working on. They do have this side completely ignored, so I'm going to rotate the frame and put it back in so that that empty side is facing the brood nest. And then I have one brood frame next to that and I'm gonna put this frame that they need to draw right next to that one. And the reason I'm doing that is because there's another brood frame on the other side of it, so then they're forced to draw this out. They don't like space in between their brood foams. So, that one will be pretty much ready for us to move that into a 10 frame. All right, so this is hive number two. What do you think we should name her? And I have two more hives to show you before I ask your opinion on one more thing. All right, which one should we do first? Let's do this one first, because this one is still probably one of the hives I'm the most excited of. Okay, so we had this whole entire area. So this is kind of like our storage area where we just like throw boxes for us to just be able to pull whenever we need them out here. That way they're easily accessible. And we don't have to bring them back and forth because we have to walk everything in on this path. And it's quite a job to be able to do that. Um, so we just tend to leave some of the stuff out here covered and whatnot. But anyways, so we had some of those boxes out here with empty comb in it. Well, it was like messed up comb. It was comb that we had that was torn up by mice and needed to be repaired. And we were just gonna slowly kind of introduce that into some of the colonies so they could start repairing it, which that's really cool that bees can do that. Like the comb is not completely trash. They do have to rebuild it, but they can rebuild it. And all of a sudden, one day, we're like, hmm, there's a lot of bees going in and out of there. I wonder what's going on. So Casey opened it, and there was a hive inside. And you can tell they're used to we're being in a hive because they had the comb. They drew out comb into an area that had um, some frames missing and drew it out exactly as if they were expecting it to be a hive. Uh, it was all parallel. They didn't draw wonky comb. So these bees, I'm super excited about to see what's going on. Look how jam-packed they are in there right now. That's pretty cool. So this is gonna be hive number three. This is gonna be kind of like the, the bandit hive. They just like randomly moved in. Nobody knows where they came from. They were just a random swarm. That is the best way to catch a swarm. So we're gonna have to figure out what we wanna call this one. Yeah, see that comb down in there? I should probably take it out so you can see. This is what I mean by like comb that they had to repair. See that? And they're working on it. There's some uh, like moldy, moldy pollen in there, but like this frame was way worse. They are currently trying to clean it out. Same with that side. And bees, they like to clean. They like to do this stuff. They wanna be busy. And I've been watching them over the last month slowly just come from like being these frames and just slowly keep working out to that side. So there's another frame that they're working on repairing. Yeah, see that mouse damage? Oh boy, yeah, they're tearing up that comb. They're eating up the comb. And then they're gonna start moving out all of that pollen and stuff. I know this is typically not how you'd want a hive to look, but like I said, they moved into this hive when it was not supposed to be a hive. So if this is what they wanted, I was like, well, might as well just give them what they want. If they want to repair it, let them repair it. 
And then we have, looks like some resources. You can see how that comb right there in the middle is lighter. That's because they drew it out. They repaired it and started drawing it back out. So. This looks like it, ouch. <laughs> They're singing me through these gloves. This looks like it's primarily a honey frame. So I'm not seeing any brood yet. Yeah, they are getting a little feisty. They do seem to be that kind. They are working on drawing this one back out on this side because this is another frame that was torn apart. So another thing to kind of like, I know I'm like kind of like bouncing all over the place, but another thing I've noticed with the European fowl brood, there's some genetics that are susceptible and other genetics that are not. Because last time I checked, yeah, this one is completely healthy. They're not getting any of the fowl brood. It's not spreading like wildfire. They're somehow managing it perfectly. And she draws a, she makes a perfect brood pattern. This is a frame that they're all hatching out of right now and she's already backfilled it. So that's great to see. Oh, hey, look, she's right there in the middle. Want to make sure that I don't accidentally crush this one. So we're going to put her right back in. See, and that's the thing. I like the other queen, but at the same time, if they're getting foul brood, it might be better that they read Queen North Genetics. Oh yeah. Look at that. Ain't that just pretty. That's what I like to see with a queen. They're still working on building that one out. I might rotate in one frame so they're forced to fix it in between some of these brood frames. Got another nice pretty brood frame. Yeah, they're cooking. She's going in and backfilling where needed. Oh, wait till you guys see this next one. I've also noticed the newer the comb, the better their, their brood pattern is. Older comb, it's harder from the formless pattern. So I think it's a good idea to rotate out frames, be on a schedule with that because they do much better when they have new comb that they built. Yeah, this looks pretty. These are looking good. And I have the last frame. Also right here. So, okay, you guys are actually able to see this firsthand. I'm not seeing any swarm cells in here. Yet in the other hive that was way weaker than this one, they had swarm cells. So explain that. What is going on there? Some genetics, I don't know, they're just more prone to swarming than others. This one looks to be doing pretty good. It doesn't want to swarm even though they, that's one, two, three, four, five frames of capped brood. So they are about to explode. They will be ready for a second box in the next week. Maybe even sooner. I don't see any cups in here, so they're not even thinking about preparing. That is one of the things I look for, is if they have this much brood. If I also see queen cups on the bottom of the frames, you better get their, their frames arranged. Otherwise, you're going to have your bees in the trees. So, another thing, bees don't really like to work out. They like to work up, so it's important to rotate in frames every so often. That way they actually start utilizing the whole hive. They will ignore frames. So that's what I'm doing right now too, is I'm making sure they have to utilize all of these frames. I'm kind of like training them in a way. So bees are like, like, like your pets. They're like a dog or they're like a cat. And you can train them. You can train them how, to, how you want them to arrange their hive and be in their box. Now, of course, with reason, because you can't get them to do the complete opposite of what their nature is, but you can kind of like work with their nature and move things about accordingly. So 
that's what I'm doing right now. Checkerboarding in some of those frames that they still need to work on in between brood frames. That is the key. All right, so this is hive number three. What should we name her? And then hive number four. This hive was a problem child. And the reason I say it was a problem child is because this is one of the queens that moved into our grafting hive. We have had this problem for two years now. We've moved our grafting hive into areas where we are for sure. There's absolutely no queens coming back from mating flights. But then I don't know where they're coming from. If other people in the area have hives, even though it's kind of like out in the middle of like the farmland and cornfields, it's at our house. <laughs> That's where we live in kind of like a farm town. And Somehow, they still got into our grafting hive and stung a bunch of cells. It keeps happening. I don't know why the bees won't just stop trying to come to us, but... So that's what this one is. This is hive number four. And as you can see, she is... She means business. Like, she is going. And she's a little feisty, too. All right, outside frame, cap brood, a little bit they need to work still. It's kind of hard to see if she's laying in here because this is, oh, I do see some larva, so she is. This is one of those frames that has yellow foundation. I prefer black foundation for brood frames just because then you can actually see the eggs. But I was trying them out a couple years ago. Oh, this is a nice frame of brood that just hatched out both sides. She had a nice, beautiful brood pattern there, and they're all emerging. And I do see eggs in here, so she is back filling. That's what you want to see with a queen like this. And then we have, ooh, look at that. Oh yeah, that is beautiful. And if you were to ask me what my favorite, most beautiful sight is in the entire world, it might be brew frames that are like that. But the kind that have like yellow capped comb because those are newer frames, I think those like, they get me excited. That is my favorite thing to see. And they're working on drawing this out right now. This frame is not waxed anymore. It was at one point, but that's the thing. If you put wa if you put frames in a hive to, for them to draw, before they're ready to draw them, they'll just eat that wax and use it themselves. Bees are lazy. I've said this many times. They are very productive, yes, but they're also very lazy. So that's what they're doing with that one right now. And then we have some honey and some brood and empty on the other side. So I'm going to flip it so the empty is facing the inside. I'm going to move this frame in between those two brood frames so that they draw it out. Just having a brood frame, oh, like the one you saw that size. I am just a mess today, aren't I? Um, this hive is going to be jam-packed again soon. So they're also going to be ready for a 10 frame or even a second story. And then I'm going to put this back on the outside, which is where they had it previously. Don't want to stress them out too much. And I'll scoop these up and put them back in there. Make sure I didn't knock out the queen. <laughs> Sorry guys, didn't mean to do that. Now, one last thing. So, we're gonna put all four of these hives right down here. Casey weed whacked a path for me, which was so nice of him. He is way too good to me, I swear. He is a real life Prince Charming. But, so we're gonna put them right down here in this little circle. Now, I know putting them in a shaded area is not ideal, but this will keep them in this yard, which is what I wanted. So, and this will kind of keep them separated from the rest of them, which is also what I wanted. And when we had the pallets down here last year, 
they did phenomenally so we're gonna try it out um i will have to watch out for small hive beetles so that'll be good for you guys to see firsthand small hive beetles can be a really big problem in shaded areas but okay so now we have to figure out how we want to arrange them down here what kind of hive stand do we want to put them on what do you guys think i want you guys' opinions i already have a couple bottom boards out here because i am going to put them into 10 frames once they're ready but i'm going to go pick up supplies so tell me your opinion on what you think Gosh, it's nice to be able to do the fun part of beekeeping again. I love every aspect of beekeeping, but over the last couple months, it has been a lot. <laughs> but luckily, things are starting to slow down. So we're going to put these hives down here and see what, what we can do with them before winter time and figure out how to overwinter them and all that fun stuff. So that's all I have for you today. And before you go, what do you think we should name these hives? I'll see you guys in the next one. Don't quit and be fit.